friends, and welcome to the video. I'm Olivia, and if you've never seen my face before, you can consider me your fragrance fairy godmother. So I'm coming to you guys bare-faced today because I honestly just want to kick it a little bit relaxed today and talk about some new perfumes that I've gotten in the mail. I thought we could do a good old-fashioned haul. So obviously because these are new fragrances, I won't be able to talk about the longevity. Very much just going to be my first impressions, what I get out of them. Kick back, relax, get yourself a little tea a little hot cocoa, and let's talk about some smelly water. Okay, first up on the list, I got this travel set from the brand Showbod. This comes in a set. I don't have the box because I, I like to throw that stuff out. I don't like to take up too much space because obviously I already have a lot of stuff around me. For those of you who are gourmand fragrance lovers, I think you would love this. What's nice is Showbod is technically a niche brand, but they are on the affordable side of niche perfumery. So you get the set of four for I think 69 euro. I had the scent Le et Chocolat, Le de Biscuit, Le Concentré, and Le de Vigny. Le de Vigny smells like a high quality vanilla candle. It's kind of got that waxy quality to it. I realize a lot of people don't want to smell like a candle, but there are days where I could enjoy that. Out of all of them, I feel like this one has the most synthetic kind of nature to it, but I personally think that it's fun. Le Concentré is super duper duper milky to the point where it's almost buttery, like a buttered popcorn sort of thing. But there is a sweetness to it that reminds me of almost caramel or like a sweetened condensed milk. So think buttery, like a shoe pastry. But Lady Biscuit and Le et Chocolat are kind of competing for my favorite. Lady Biscuit smells like you are dunking a Maria's cookie, like a biscuit, in cold milk. It's pretty simple, but it is so delicious. And I'm pretty sure that my husband wants to steal this one from me, but he can't have it because I only have a little travel size. Le Chocolat has that artificial thing that I was talking about the first one. It smells like a Tootsie Roll. As it dries down, it has a jasmine and a woodiness. So that chocolate fades out and you're left with something floral. This one out of all of them has the most nuance, but I wish that chocolate stayed around just a little bit longer. I would say that my favorite favorite though is Lady Biscuit. Next, I picked this one up at Ross. I have had my eye on this fragrance for quite some time. I first smelled it in Ulta. It's not the most unique thing, but it is just delicious to me. So this is Sparkle by Kate Spade. This smells like I can't remember which one it is. Angel Nova? In the pink star bottle. The very fruity fresh one that people say smells like Delina, but it's kind of uh, not really. This is fruity and sparkling, hence the name sparkle. It's very bright and juicy and refreshing. It almost has berry shampoo sort of feel to it. But then in the base, it has the note of creme brulee. As this sits on your skin, you get this caramelized effect. That's pretty intoxicating. So I've had my eye on this one. And then I saw a little travel size and I think this was under $20. Although it's not really the season for it. I just wanted something a little fruity and fresh and basic. Whatever, I like it. A friend of mine visited from Mexico and she brought me oil perfume from Byredo. This is Rose of No Man's Land. I've used this a couple times now and I have been enjoying pairing this with all of my rose perfumes. It is a natural smelling rose, but then it has raspberry bloom, so there's a little bit of fruitiness and there is a note of papyrus, so it gives it a little bit of an earthy green herbal sort of quality. This on its own doesn't have a ton of projection but when layered with other rose fragrances, it's really enjoyable. So I've really been using this more as a layering tool. I'm not a huge fan of oil perfumes. I just, I don't know what it is. I can't get into them. I need to spray down my clothes because on my skin, oil perfumes, perfumes in general, they just don't last on me that well. I caved, guys. I finally found a bottle of Guidance on Mercari, and I could tell by the seller that they had a lot of different products, so it wasn't going to be fake, and it's really hard to fake these bottles. It has all of the correct things on it. I know the scent very well, so I know it's not fake. Don't worry about that. I got it for a good price. I just love this scent. There's something so deliciously intoxicating about it, and I realize it's polarizing. A lot of people were like, Olivia, you are insane for that, because I hated that fragrance. Well, to each their own, because if my house was on fire, 
and I had to grab only a handful of fragrances, this would be in it because this, honey, right here, for me to go and spend the money on this when I have all of these fragrances, that's how you know it's good because your girl was willing to drop some coin. Oh, it's so good. Got some affordable goodies. This is from the brand Le Monde Gourmand, where they go by Gourmand Beauty online, so I'm not sure which one is the proper name. A lot of people know about this one right here. This is Le de Coco. This is a super milky, creamy coconut scent. It smells like if you were to cut up a coconut and you get that like oiliness as well. It's that like thick, creamy coconut. It's sweet, it's good for summer, a lot of people love it, but apparently they came out with a flanker called Coco Mystere. This is more of a toasted coconut with a candied ginger. So it has a little zippiness to it, but it's not too sour because I don't really like ginger in fragrances all that much. I'm very picky with it. So objectively, this one is more interesting, but I would say that I enjoy them the same. They're just for different occasions. I feel like this one, given that it has that toasted quality could be a little bit better for fall winter time and then this one would be all year round but specifically this feels like a summertime scent because it is so tropical. I recently got Queen Bee from Good Chemistry. Citruses are not listed in this. Beginning is a little bit zippy. It is a little bit zesty and sour. This has a black currant, peony, and amber so to me this is a fruity floral but I do get a lot of citrus in the beginning. Once again you have that sparkling effect, kind of feels like a clean shampoo-y type smell, like a fruit shampoo. So she's cute. It's not terribly interesting, but this would be good for fresh, like every day out of the shower, you're running errands. I was super excited to purchase this one. This is from the brand Zaharoff, and this is called Of The Immortals. And this was made in collaboration with a perfume reviewer who is absolutely fabulous. That's Curly Sense. If you guys have never seen her videos, she is such a sweetheart. I just love her. I think she's fabulous. I love her suggestions and her videos are just lighthearted and entertaining. When I saw that she came out with a fragrance, I immediately looked at the notes and when I tell you. This has all the notes that I enjoy. It's got coffee, it's got coconut, fig, sandalwood, tobacco, booze. I mean, this has all the things. The story behind this is that it is inspired by ambrosia, the food and drink of gods, specifically Greek gods, because your girl Curly is Greek. This smells like a coconut cream tiramisu with some dark nuance to it. I don't think that it's super duper gourmand. This one is gourmand, but also perfumey. It doesn't smell like straight food because of that tobacco, because of that booze, because of those rich dark notes. In the beginning you get something that's a little bit more feminine and then as it wears on the skin it goes a little more masculine, which I personally love because I like something that has a little bit of androgyny. Look at that texture. Look at the bottle. It is so well done. Next is Ode to Dullness. I was very hesitant with this fragrance because it has the note of anise which can come off smelling like black licorice and I absolutely hate the scent of black licorice. But luckily I found the anise in this to be very soft. I find this a very comforting, very relaxing, cozy fragrance. I think the name is just perfect. Ode to dullness. This is just your like quiet moment sort of fragrance. Something that you would put on to cuddle. This would be good for someone who works in an industry where they can't really wear much fragrance or maybe a new mom or someone who's really sensitive to fragrances. I've got two new ones from the house of Ellis Brooklyn. We have Myth and sci-fi. So Myth is a simple white musk fragrance. It feels very clean. It feels fresh. I've noticed that a lot of white musk fragrances often come with a heavy dose of vanilla. This is more on the dry side. It leans slightly woody. Straight out of the package when you first spray this, I perceive something a little bit alcoholic, acetone, a little bit gasoline, that little sharp thing that happens, but rest assured it does chill out into a nice cooling white musk refreshing fragrance, but out of the two, sci-fi was the one that I really liked. This is an interesting balance because in the beginning I get a lot of tart, refreshing, juicy citrus, but then I get a little bit of greenness, something that comes off a little bit earthy, grassy, a little bit herbal. In the base, I start to get a creaminess and a woodiness. So it's both refreshing, it's green, but it also has a sweet, creamy side. But to be honest, with a name like sci-fi, I thought that this would be much more of an interesting scent profile. I thought it would be something out there 
there, but this is a very enjoyable fragrance. So out of the two, this one is just your clean, soft, everyday, and this one is green and refreshing with a nice little twist at the end. I believe I have talked about my deep, deep detest for Herbapura on this channel before, but in case you needed a reminder, I hate Herba Pura. So when Twisted Lily offered to send me Herba Gold, I was quite hesitant. I thought there was no way that I would enjoy a flanker of that fragrance, but I am very pleasantly surprised and I'm very happy. This is my favorite color of all time. This specific shade of yellow, if I looked good in this yellow, I would wear it, but it is not within my color season. This is really good. My gripe about the original is that musk is painfully synthetic. It is a cold, sharp metallic like white musk that comes off so nauseating and then when coupled with like sweet syrupy fruitiness ugh, it just I hate that fragrance but this comes off as tropical fruits it doesn't come off so syrupy but then you get a little bit of like a refreshing ginger you get a soft touch of spiciness that only serves to warm up the musk so that way it doesn't go cold and metallic and like medicinal smelling so those spices aren't enough to bother if you don't like a spiced fragrance. And the musk in this is just so much more chill. So it is fruity, it's juicy, it's a little bit tangy with a strong musk, but one that's actually palatable. So I did end up shopping the Sephora sale and I did get that sample set where you can buy it for $85, get a bunch of samples, and then get a discounted bottle of fragrance. So I went with Golden Nectar by Nest. This is a powdery, comforting vanilla. It has a lipsticky, makeup-y, cosmetic sort of touch to it, but it also has some sweetness that almost comes off like honeyed fruits. There's no fruits listed, but I do get a fruitiness in the beginning, but as it dries down, it goes warm, ambery, powdery, and there is, interestingly enough, a little bit of a slightly synthetic thing that gives it a Barbie doll head type quality, something that's a little plasticky, a little waxy, and you would think that that would turn me away from this, but it doesn't. I like it. It feels like playing with Barbie dolls when I was younger. It gives me a really comforting nostalgia. My friend Steph was nice enough to gift me this little bottle of Black Opium Le Parfum. I don't so much care for the original Black Opium, but I really like this flanker because it's really tuned up the vanilla, so it softens the composition. In the original, I don't like the white florals. They tend to be very sharp and a little bit nauseating to me, but this is such a nice balance of a light bit of coffee, a smooth, creamy vanilla, and some really sophisticated white florals. This has great performance. This has projection and it lasts a very long time. So if you want a cozy wintertime fragrance, I would really check out this one. I also have two new ones from the Replica line, Autumn Vibes and By the Fireplace. Now By the Fireplace, I have had dupes of it in the past. I have had little travel sizes. So for now, I have a one fluid ounce bottle and this is so delicious. It is a charred wood with a little bit of resinous sweet vanilla, but it truly does smell like you are sitting next to a fireplace burning marshmallows, specifically burning marshmallows because it does have that charred type quality. This is so delicious to me. Some people have asked me how this compares to the maker and I feel that they are quite different. This has that smoky woodiness and although there is some smokiness in the maker, that is more of a boozy fragrance. So that one might be a little bit more similar to Jazz Club, whereas this one is just smoky, smoky, smoky. And if you put this with the EOS Vanilla Body Lotion. Oh, it is so good. And Autumn Vibes reminds me a little bit of the dry sandalwood that you get in Santal 33. It has almost a petrichor damp earth. Imagine you have some sun-scorched trees. It looks bright orange, but there is a mist that's rolling through that is dampening these dry leaves, making some of them soggy, some of them crispy. That is kind of what I'm getting from this. If Santal 33 was too leather, it's too intense. This falls within the same range to me, but I feel this is a softer, fresher scent profile. Now this one I'm really excited for. I got sent Tobacco Honey by Guerlain. This is pretty photorealistic. It smells like dried tobacco leaves and a thick, rich Manuka honey. And the combination of the two remind me of shisha, like a hookah lounge. I used to go to the hookah lounge all the time, so this is a very nice scent 
for me. Something about it kind of reminds me of Tobacco Vini. So if you like Tobacco Vini and you wanted something a little additionally sweet, has that syrupy honey scent, I think you would like this. I got sent a couple from the brand Lorga, Santal Sugar, and Ombre Platine. Ombre Platine is an old school ambery fragrance. I get a really, really strong dose of pink pepper in the beginning, which I don't so much care for. And if I'm being honest, uh, there's something about this that I find a little bit nauseating. So I'm going to have to give this one a little bit more of a go before I tell you guys my thoughts because so far it's not my favorite. And I had really high hopes for Santal Sugar. It's got lychee and cocoa, sandalwood. I am picking up on something almost like lemongrass. It smells like the spices that go into Thai food. Neither of these are really working out for me at the moment, but I will remain open-minded until I give them a really proper wear because so far I've only tried them on my hands. Let me give a full day's wear and let you guys know what I think about these, but so far I am not all too impressed. But on a happier note, I have received this one called Musk Mochus by Rania J and I am very happy with this one. I've worn it a couple times now and this is a silky smooth creamy vanilla musk fragrance. It has a little bit of fruitiness from some black currant. This is just velvety smooth. It's soft. It's sweet. I think that if you like musk fragrances this one is a must-have. It is stunning. Mmm there's just something so smooth and sweet and cozy about this one. And lastly is a brand new one from the house of Tamin. This is called Bravi and this oddly enough has the note of walnut milk. Personally I am getting a load of white florals that come off vintage and there is a honeyed sweetness in this. So it's honeyed vintage tuberose with a tobacco-like dry down. I think that a lot of people are going to feel like this smells quite mature. I'm still deciding if I enjoy this one. I'll give it a little bit of time and see how I feel. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video doing a little haul. Sorry I started to lose a little bit of steam at the end of the video. I'm not feeling too well. I think I need to go throw up. So I'm gonna go get off of this camera and until next Saturday 10 a.m. PST, Take care of yourselves, my friends.